Give me zero CC on.
All right, and good evening, everyone, around the Skyhub link and on the YouTube stream, if you're watching. We will start tonight's Skyhub link system-wide Monday night net just about, uh, oh, two minutes and 15 seconds away. This is Kaiser of EH Sweet Ridge, Colorado, on the Skyhub link. All right, and good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Skyhub Link Monday Night System Wide Net. This is Jack, K E 0 V H in Wheat Ridge, Colorado. We have this uh, net every Monday night to discuss amateur radio and other interesting topics. Skyhub Link is not a closed system in any way. We welcome all users in the true spirit of amateur radio. Please remember during all use of this multi-mode linking system, we need you to allow three to five seconds between transmissions and then one and a half seconds for key up and then begin speaking. Also, keep the PTT push to half second or so after your last word. When more than two people are using a repeater, please set up a rotation so that you won't be doubling over other parties in a roundtable discussion. Remember, you're on many repeaters and modes simultaneously. Good amateur operating practice is remembering that others may need to use one of the many repeaters on the system during your QSO or maybe join in on what you're talking about. want to welcome you to the net tonight. Uh, Going to go over some pictures from my tour of the Alabama battleship in Mobile Bay, and we'll be doing that on the YouTube stream, of course, that you can see live here talking about it on the radio so uh, if you go to the nets page at skyhublink.com i've got a live link for you to click on there under the monday night net heading and uh, you can tune into the youtube stream that way and sure would appreciate you doing that if you want to see those pictures otherwise i'll be talking about it and my activities uh, with larry k5 lda uh, we had dan down there and tim from the Deep South Amateur Radio Club. They were hosting me, and we had a really good time. Uh, Larry showed me all over the ship, and we operated amateur radio. It was a lot of fun. So uh, let me do a reset here on the system, and we'll uh, continue on. Remember, it is extremely important that when you're operating a hotspot on the Skyhub Link system and when you're in YSF mode, you do not enable the WiresX pass-through. Please do not operate your radio in WiresX mode to change reflectors when you're talking on Skyhub Link through the YSF reflector. Do use the web interface of your PyStar or hotspot to change reflectors. If you operate with YSF pass-through and control the PyStar with your radio while on the U.S. Skyhub link reflector 92722, 
It can cause disconnects and other link issues. Please do not use this feature of your hotspot when you're connected to Skyhub Link. We also ask that you do not kerchunk a repeater to see if you're keying it up. Please do come on and verbally ask for a radio check. Kerchunking the system can once again cause link issues. It is really illegal as it's an unidentified transmission. Once again, to see if you're making the repeater, actually come on and ask for a radio check. Please, too, when you're monitoring the system, if you hear someone come on and ask for that radio check, be sure to respond. This is K0VH. Let me reset. Okay, it's also very important that you remember the Skyhub link, being amateur radio, is also here for safety and assistance for any commercial, uh, uh, where am I at? Communication needs, including emergencies. There we go. If you hear someone call out for assistance or emergency help on a Skyhub link repeater, no matter where you are, you can dial your local 911 number and report that you're an amateur radio operator. You've just received an emergency call. Give them the details, and then they can contact the appropriate agency in the appropriate area. Also, if someone just needs to reach out for any kind of help, maybe they got a flat tire, maybe they got a wife that needs something, whatever the case may be, let's make sure that we can help them receive the assistance needed via amateur radio. And is there any emergency traffic at this time? Okay, I'd like to remind everybody this is a controlled net. All must check in to be recognized by NCS. We're going to do the check-in process a little bit differently tonight. We've kind of been experimenting with some different ways of doing it. Uh, I will let you check in via the AIM window on uh, NetLogger. We are under NetLogger. Just look up the Skyhub Link system net. And Cat uh, will put you on the list. I will come to you in a roundtable discussion and expect that if you want to say something, and I'll give you a little bit of time to do it uh, to get there, uh, but we'll move on pretty quickly if you don't show up. Uh, if you'd like to make a comment on the subject tonight, I will come to you in the order you've checked in, and we are going to take radio check-ins this way tonight. We're going to do digital, then we're going to do analog. Not call sign area, not whatever, but we're going to do digital check-ins, then analog, then digital, then analog. We're going to keep going back and forth and give everybody a chance on both modes uh, to check in. I will be taking repeater owners and system operators checking in first, and then we'll do the uh, digital and analog checking in. By the way, if you're listening on the Internet stream, don't forget you could watch on YouTube by going to the Nets page at uh, skyhublink.com. Go down to the Monday Night Net section, and you can click on the link, and it'll take you to the YouTube stream tonight. And you're going to need that if you want to see the pictures uh, from my operation on the Alabama. So, and I'll try to be doing it in a manner that allows people who might not, well, who are listening on the radio to kind of get an idea of what was going on at the time and so on and so forth. Just uh, absolutely amazing. I don't have a million pictures to share with you tonight, but uh, enough to give a good representation, I think. So uh, we'll do that way. All right, let's go ahead and see if we can get some repeater owners, system operators checking. And by the way, tonight's net question for you is like my trip to the Alabama. Have you ever had the opportunity or dream of doing something kind of special like that? We've talked about this subject kind of a little bit in the past uh, in various forms, but uh, we'll do that again tonight, uh, being as that's what, what the uh, material is that I'm going to cover here. So with that, let's go ahead and get repeater owners and system operators to check in first over the radio. And uh, I'll try to look and see if we've got some people uh, through the uh, through the AIM window to start with, and we'll do that for the first round. So if you're a repeater owner, system operator, let's check you in now. By, uh, by your call sign phonetically twice, this is K0VH. Go ahead and call now. Alpha Echo 7, Romeo, Juliet. That's Alpha Echo 7, Romeo, Juliet. Okay, Randall, got you. AE7RJ, is there anybody else that would like to check in uh, at this time? Uh, let's see. I see that, uh, Kat, you've got uh, some folks on there, so we'll come to them in a minute. 
Uh, is there any other repeater owners or system operators that would like to check in over the air? Please call with your call sign phonetically twice at this time. This is K0VH. Roger that, KZOVH and 6JPH, November 6, Julia Papa Hotel, Jason Blanca on the Blanca repeater. Yeah, okay, Jason. Uh, you know what? I'm going to come to you and Randall first, and I'm going to go down the net logger uh, check ins where I see uh, in 0KM 84Z uniform. Uh, Kilo Bravo Zero TTL NC2 WX K5J and T, their Stan from Mississippi. Uh, KI0 AR, Bernice, good evening. And K6 SKI. Okay, we'll take you guys checking in uh, via the AIM window and otherwise. And by the way, Cat is going to try to watch the YouTube chat window. I am not watching it. Uh, if you'd like to check in that way, go ahead and uh, make a note in there in the ch- in the chat that uh, you'd like to check in and talk on the radio. We'll get you there. All right, AE7RJ, Randall, good evening. Uh, like I said, I'm going to go over these Alabama pictures here in just a few minutes, but uh, let's go ahead and get uh, some folks checked in here. Randall, good evening. Welcome to the – oh, by the way, i got to do this. <laughs> uh, this is what you get for trying to do ten things at once. Well, speaking of Jason there, we do have the new Blanca, San Luis Valley, DMR repeater, where Skyhub Link is on time slot one, talk group 310847. Time slot two is for open use. It is color code one. i got to put that part in that section, too. But uh, we'll have Jason tell us about that in a few minutes. Randall, good evening. Welcome to the net. AE7RJ from K0VH. Yeah, the uh, Good evening, Jack. And everyone, oh, let's see. Your question was whether or not we'd done something like that on Navy ships. And I was in the Navy, so I have been on uh, a few uh, submarines and surface vessels and the aircraft carrier and a uh, couple aircraft. And I have operated AM radio from uh, <clears throat> from one of those ships where I made a call to uh, my wife via a Mars operator. And uh, I got to do that a couple of times, and that was fun. So I think that was your question. If it's not, please come back and tell me. And uh, I'll, 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 I'll think of something new to say. Y'all have a good evening. AE7RJ. Yeah, okay, Randall. Nope, no nope, worries. That, that'll that do fine. Uh, by the way, I um, appreciate you being here tonight, as always, too. One more announcement. Uh, we're hoping to get the Leadville repeater on, 449575. Uh, hopefully getting that on the air uh, here this week, maybe even tomorrow. Going to take a lunch hour and do that uh, because I've got to do some work out in Leadville anyway before it snows again. Uh, but uh, the new Leadville repeater will be on. And speaking of new repeaters, let's go to Jason. In Blanca, Colorado, Jason has just put on the new 446750 repeater uh, DMR covering the uh, San Luis Valley, Alamosa, Monta Vista, up and down the valley there. Jason, good evening. Welcome to the net uh, from KE0VH. Yeah, I Thank you very much there, Jack, and uh, I appreciate it. And, uh, yes, if you're down the valley, check out my new repeater. It's awesome. Um, I'm, I missed the question, but I'm guessing that you were asking something along the lines of ham radio on Navy ships. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, exactly that. Uh, have you had a chance to go see any, operate from any? Uh, have you worked uh, the museum ships on the air? I'm going to talk about that a little bit, too, because uh, the weekend of June 2nd, I think it is, uh, it'll be a museum ships on the air. Uh, they will activate via amateur radio a ton of uh, different uh, museum ships around the country, including uh, battleships and aircraft carriers and submarines and all that. So, Jason, if you have the opportunity to work any of those uh, at all, uh, go ahead. And uh, good to have you here tonight for the first time. In 6 jph from KE0VH. Yeah, Roger, Roger. So uh, I also was in the Navy. I did two years on board the USS George Washington, 
And at the time, I knew absolutely nothing about uh, ham radio. And uh, after my two years on board the G-Dub, I decided to do a career change and became a Navy CB as a heavy equipment operator. And I still didn't know anything about ham radio at that time either. I was still using the CB. So, um, no, I did not. I have not operated any ham radio from a Navy vessel at this time, but I will add it to my bucket list. Yeah, all right. Very good, Jason. Yeah, yeah, you should. Uh, you know, I found that um, if you find out who is uh, maybe in charge of the amateur radio club, I just looked up the USS Alabama. I'm going to go ahead and put this uh, picture of her uh, up on YouTube now. Um, I looked up the USS Alabama museum ship. I knew that they had a, a full museum complex there, as you can see on YouTube. Battleship on the left, there's various airplanes around. They have an aircraft uh, pavilion, and then the USS Drum submarine uh, is over to the right behind the big B-52 bomber you see on the YouTube screen. here. Uh, but uh, I just called up, and then I looked for, uh, you know, amateur radio club associated with the USS Alabama. Uh, got uh, Larry, K5LDA's uh, information from their website, emailed him, and he was so happy to have me come down and see this thing. Uh, it's, uh, it's not even funny how happy he was, uh, that I decided to, uh, to ask to operate and, uh, and come down. So, uh, you know, give it a shot sometime. You never know what you might, uh, might find and who you might find. That's going to be very super, uh, welcoming to, uh, to have you come there. Uh, before I get to the rest of the check-ins guys, and we'll take more rounds of check-ins, let's go ahead and do my little tour here of the USS Alabama. This is the Skyhub Link Monday Night System Wide Net. This is K0VH. And uh, yeah, last week I got to go on a vacation and uh, my lovely wife uh, uh, allowed me an entire morning on the USS Alabama. So we'll go ahead and through the, uh, go through the presentation here. Uh, once again, this is K0VH. Let me reset the repeaters. Okay, for those of you uh, watching on YouTube, you can see me uh, proudly wearing my, uh, where, where is it? There we go, my red USS Alabama shirt. Of course, Crimson Tide colors, so you got to figure that. And my hat. Uh, real, real happy to have been able to pick that up in the gift shop there. It's so neat. Here you see the uh, 680-foot-long USS Alabama 16-inch gun warship. Uh, battleship of the South Dakota class. Now, this was the four battleships that were built prior to uh, the USS Iowa class, the Iowa, Missouri, Wisconsin, and New Jersey. And uh, the South Dakota, the North Carolina, the Alabama, and I've forgotten the fourth one now right off the top of my head, but they were the, uh, the pride of the Navy prior to uh, all those uh, other capital ships coming online uh, for World War II. So we'll go ahead and uh, show you some more pictures. You can see in this one behind me here, the five inch artillery guns, the 40 millimeter and 25 millimeter anti-aircraft uh, guns. You got to figure when this thing had its uh, guns ablazing, the noise must have just been absolutely phenomenal. Uh, just absolutely incredible. This is a uh, DC-3 military version, the C-47, that's up on the YouTube screen right now. And I am going to watch my time to make sure I don't time out the repeaters. Uh, but, uh, you know, I'm an airplane buff, and getting to see this aircraft and get up close to it was just absolutely extraordinary. I really, really enjoyed uh, getting to see this aircraft there as well. Uh, inside the aircraft pavilion is a B-25 Martin bomber that has been completely restored. And uh, it's actually been restored uh, to the configuration that was used by uh, uh, Jimmy Doolittle to bomb Tokyo on the uh, Doolittle Tokyo bombing run. I'm sure many of you uh, remember about that. So it was pretty cool to get to see that. Uh, this is ke 0 vh Let me reset the repeaters. Oh, dear. I think uh, you guys on YouTube didn't get to see that. Let me go back through the pictures. I did not have those up on the screen. Oh, uh, well, that's what I get for looking at the wrong screen. Anyway, there you go. There's the DC-3 C-47 and me uh, beside the battleship about 100 feet away. And you can see the uh, uh, anti-aircraft artillery 
and uh, the other artillery associated with that. Um, I want to take uh, one quick moment, and we'll see more about this. Now you can actually see the pictures on the screen. Sorry, guys. Um, I'm surprised Cat didn't text me or something. Uh, but anyway, there's uh, the entire the entire uh, museum area, the part of it you can see from the front. 680-foot-long battleship, and the aircraft, and the aircraft pavilion over here on the right behind the B-52. So let's go ahead and catch us back up to where we are. All right, there's the B-25 uh, 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 bomber. And, uh, man, just seeing this stuff up close uh, is just phenomenal, See, seeing this stuff that was actually in the war. Here's a better shot of the Alabama and its artillery from the uh, port side of the ship going up the uh, entry gangway. And, uh, again, the noise that must have gone on during their battles uh, with this thing just must have been absolutely Amazing. Let me do one more reset. This is K0VH. Okay, and it's very interesting here. You can see the stern of the ship and uh, the white tent, by the way, they're redoing the decking. Uh, the teak decking is over 80 years old on this ship from when it was first built. And you can also see a lot of the hull plating here and part of the 12 and 16 inch armor that this battleship carried to deflect enemy shells, of course. Here's another great shot looking up the uh, port side and uh, getting closer as we get ready to uh, go on board uh, the USS Alabama. And then uh, another closer shot and where the tour entrance uh, goes into. Uh, once again, you can see the wooden teak plank decking. And in this shot uh, in the picture, you can see how they played it over a lot of spots in it as I zoom in and move around. And uh, they're in the process, like I said, of completely redoing this teak deck. Um, I spent more time really just enjoying the tour than I did trying to take a bunch of pictures. Uh, so I don't necessarily have a whole lot, but it'll give you a real good idea of what we did see. This is the side of the rear 16-inch turret. Uh, the, the shell there, you can see uh, in, the, uh, in the middle of the picture, and I'll zoom in on it a little bit. This is a 2,000-pound projectile, and with the force uh, of these guns, they could hurl these shells more than 20 miles very accurately and, of course, uh, use either armor-piercing incendiary or uh, just plain explosive cells, you, you, you know, uh, shells. you got to figure, once again, the noise and the din when they were doing this was just absolutely phenomenal. Let me go ahead and reset the repeaters. This is K0VH. Okay, and here's a close-up of the backside of the main mast, the conning tower, and one of the 5-inch uh, artillery turrets on the side of the Alabama. Uh, you can see here where the teak deck has been replaced. Uh, once again, they're in the process of doing this. There's a company, I guess, that does this for all these ships. And, uh, man, I tell you what, that teak decking is just as smooth as an android's bottom. <laughs> uh, it's just amazing, as smooth as your, uh, your tabletop in your dining room. Just absolutely incredibly amazing. A closer shot here of one of the anti-aircraft mounts. Uh, they had 40 millimeter and 25 millimeter, I think, anti-aircraft guns aboard the USS Alabama. Let me go ahead and uh, we'll take another uh, look at that. Uh, these turrets actually do still spin. It's been a lot of years since they fired the guns, but uh, they are still workable, at least in the, uh, the foremost turret there. This is one of the uh, HF antennas, the original HF antennas aboard ship when the ship would need to communicate. And we'll see the radio room, and you'll actually get to see something here that most of the general public does not get to see because they let me down in there. The actual transmitter room, not just a reception room, but the actual transmitter room uh, aboard the ship. But this is one of the uh, HF antennas that was used, uh, you know, during, uh, during real communications uh, back in the day. And also the uh, amateur radio group there has tied into a couple of them, so they can actually use those as well. Let me reset. This is KE0VH. Once again, if you uh, get a chance to go to the YouTube channel, you can find that by going to the Nets page at skyhublink.com and uh, click on the link for tonight's uh, uh, YouTube live stream uh, there on the Monday Night Net uh, section of the website. So let me uh, go ahead and reset.
Now, many of you, many of you will recognize in this picture, this is a vertical. Uh, it's a Cushcraft vertical, I believe, of some sort that they actually mounted uh, to the ship for the amateur radio use on board, as well as the uh, standard antennas. And they do have some uh, wire antennas as well strung uh, all over the superstructure there. So it's really, really pretty cool, uh, all the capabilities that they have. This is Larry, K5LDA, and he's showing me where one of the antenna pass-throughs, you can see that there with the glass insulation and the, uh, the outer shell there going up to one of the wire antennas strung that they used uh, both uh, during the ship's action times and uh, that they have tied into now for the amateur radio station there. This picture is another picture of uh, some of the, F, uh, the HF verticals. You can see it's kind of a four-section vertical there mounted on the glass insulator uh, like you'd see uh, basically an AM vertical mounted uh, at an AM broadcast station. This is K0VH with the Skyhub Link Monday Night Net. Uh, uh, we're uh, talking about uh, my visit last week to the USS Alabama. Hopefully you can watch this on YouTube or you'll be able to watch it again down uh, the line after uh, after tonight. We'll, uh, of course, save that, and you can go back and watch it again. This is me, of course, standing there next to one of the HF antennas. That gives you an idea uh, as to the scale and the size of uh, how big these vertical antennas were just there on the deck. And once again, you'll notice the teak decking in this section has not been restored, but, uh, man, it'll be beautiful when it is. All right, we'll do a reset here, and I'll explain uh, the next picture. This is K0VH. Okay, we'll continue on with tonight's uh, Monday Night Skyhub Link system-wide net. This picture is, uh, of course, of the sick bay, and you can notice uh, some of the hospital beds and some of the uh, instrumentation uh, that they have there. Uh, a, a, a very large room because, you know, they, they of course, could have um, uh, some major casualties. Uh, I'll explain this uh, yellow-banded uh, steel beam that's curved and moved around there. I'll explain that in just a moment. Uh, but uh, once again, Larry took a couple of pictures of me in here, and I took a lot of pictures in here, too, because my wife is a nurse, and I knew she'd be interested in seeing a wounded husband laying on the bed there. I hope you guys watching on YouTube, <laughs> uh, or uh, more of you are watching on YouTube so you can see this part. It's kind of funny. Uh, but, uh, man, you can see how small these uh, bunks were, too, these berths. Uh, you know, I'm only 5'8", so, uh, you know, it's, uh, they're, they're pretty small. Uh, here is a picture of uh, some of the instruments that they would use uh, for for the uh, medical needs there in the sick bay. You can read this on the screen. Uh, Five percent dextrose in lactated ringers solution uh, for uh, restoring bodily fluids and all this kind of thing. So uh, uh, I, I told a friend of mine that looked at these earlier. It almost looks like the Spanish uh, in <laughs> Inquisition. You can see some of these. These are rib spreaders. You can see some of the tools that they might need for emergency surgery, hemostats, and some of the other uh, some of the other uh, items there. It's uh, pretty crazy when you think about what these men might have had to uh, suffer through even uh, in battle. Here is a picture of the uh, dental station. Uh, it once again looks uh, very primitive uh, <laughs> uh, by our standards uh, today. Somewhat similar, but... Uh, very, very primitive. Uh, it's like, well, that doesn't look like it would have been a lot of fun, and I'm sure that they don't do painless dentistry uh, in in these ships uh, <laughs> like uh, like we supposedly get here now. So uh, there you go. The, you can see the drill. You can see the mechanism for the drill uh, to run and be uh, pulleyed and turned. Uh, this is KE0VH. Let me reset the repeaters. Okay, I took this picture of the sign of the isolation ward. Those of you on YouTube, of course, can see it. Uh, sailors uh, were segregated in the isolation ward uh, in case they encountered dangerous diseases, influenza, diphtheria, mumps, lice, meningitis, tuberculosis, and how those could be spread. So they would, uh, they would put people here. It was a very uh, small section. Uh, you could only look through the porthole because I guess that guy's really sick. Uh, but this this, uh, this hole, folks, that's only about a four inch hole to see into this room. It was uh, it was really quite claustrophobic feeling and uh, really really amazing uh, 
think about what these guys did. Now we're to the uh, fun part, the radio room. Let me reset. This is Kate Zero VH. All right. Yes. Uh, once again, you can see here the uh, the radio room, uh, part of the receive section of the radio room, and uh, two or three of these receivers have actually been restored, and they still work uh, these days, uh, according to Larry and his crew. There, uh, back behind uh, this mimeograph copier uh, was the slot into the code room that they would take the messages. And uh, you can see the code room door here. This was a section of the ship that most people don't get to go into. So you guys are getting to see this, and it's pretty cool. Uh, but they, they allowed me in as they were giving me uh, kind of a personalized tour. The coding room, nobody went in there during, uh, uh, during wartime, during action time, uh, with the exception of just a very few people who would decode the messages, and then they would be sent to the captain of the ship. This is K5LDA, also uh, Dan and Tim uh, from the Deep South uh, Amateur Radio Club that welcomed me aboard ship and gave me the tour there, and I really appreciate those guys. I hope maybe one of them are watching uh, tonight. They know I do this net, and they know I was going to live stream this, so I uh, hope you guys are watching, if at all possible. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at this quick uh, picture real quick. This is uh, the bank of radio receivers where they had five operators sitting 24-7, and they would, of course, uh, listen for enemy traffic, and they would listen for uh, coded traffic uh, from, uh, uh, you know, all of our military leaders. They would type them out. It would be coded. They would send them to the uh, decoding room and would be uh, uh, then uh, translated for uh, the various uh, functions aboard ship that were needed for that. Uh, they do have a lot of mannequins in there dressed. Uh, there, there's a big fenced-in, glassed-in area over to the left where the general public can look in this room. So you guys are getting a little bit closer view. Uh, it might be real interesting to see if I can read some of these placards on the uh, uh, on the receivers. Sometimes, uh, sometime I can on uh, some of the transmitters that we'll see in a moment. This is K0VH. Let me reset the repeaters. All right, here you will see uh, uh, where the coded messages went before they go in that black slot over here to the left in the picture. That's just kind of a flapping slot. You'd stick the message in there, and the decoding guys would get it and decode it out of your site. This is an audio patch board for different uh, patching communications through the ship. And uh, if we, uh, you see the old, uh, the old tube radio there, that radio was actually playing when we were in there. That radio was actually playing some audio uh, that there's only one copy of, and they made a copy of it for the Alabama. But it's Tokyo Rose uh, calling out to the GIs and the propaganda that uh, uh, Radio Japan would put out. Uh, and uh, they had Tokyo Rose playing in there, and it was really, a, it was almost eerie, almost eerie to hear. Uh, this is an RF patch panel uh, for all the different antennas. You can see the lines running out of that, and these are patch cables. They, they're basically coaxial cables within a metal sheath. Uh, you could tell the craftsmanship and the way they made things back then was just absolutely so amazing and so so exacting. And uh, man, oh man, it's just incredible to see this. But uh, Larry could actually patch a lot of the different antennas. We were using this one. Here in the center, those of you watching on YouTube can see, uh, to uh, patch through to uh, one of the antennas upstairs, and we changed it a time or two, but uh, <laughs> pretty remarkable stuff. So there's an RF patch panel from uh, 1940. And this is the actual amateur operating position that we sat at. This is in the coding room. Once again, this is actually in the coding room, and uh, it was just really incredible to sit there and think about what had happened uh, all those many years ago during World War II. And for the HF things that we did, we uh, we used this uh, Kenwood uh, transceiver here. So uh, let me go ahead and reset, and uh, we'll go to uh, uh, to the next slide here. This is K0VH.
Okay, once again, uh, this is Larry, K5LDA. He was talking to a buddy of his. And um, uh, for those of you who uh, got to work me, we didn't actually get to work HF, unfortunately, back to Colorado. It, uh, it just, uh, it, the path was not there. I worked five or six stations uh, along the East Coast and uh, in the middle of the country, but just could not get back to Colorado. But for those of you who worked me on Skyhub Link, yes, I did use my Droid Star software and using the internet connection aboard ship because there is no cell phone down in the guts of that thing. Uh, you can kind of see, I uh, believe it's over here. Yeah, we used uh, a Wi-Fi, <laughs> Wi-Fi modem to get out. But, uh, you know, those of you who know me know that I think of the internet as a long microphone cable because I'm coming out repeaters. So if I worked you uh, from the USS Alabama and you would like one here, and I'll show you this. I'm, I'm holding it here in this picture, and you see the stack of QSL cards down here to the left. I have about 14 of these uh, left over uh, the ones that, uh, that I had to get out. But if you worked me and would like one of these QSL cards, send me a self-addressed stamped envelope. I'm good on QRZ.com. Uh, but if you worked me on Skyhub link and would like one of these QSL cards, one of the actual real cards, I'm going to send out some email versions of them to everybody. But if you'd actually like one of the USS Alabama QSL cards from working me that day, I have all the times written down and logged, and I would be glad to send you that if you will send me a self-addressed stamped envelope uh, that's big enough for um, you know a standard size postcard there. This is K0VH with the Skyhub link Monday night system-wide net. Okay, well, go ahead and uh, continue along. Uh, this was one of the water fountains, and I took a picture of this because Larry called it by a certain name, and I can't for the life of me remember what that name was, uh, what they called their water fountains aboard ship. But uh, anyway, there you go. Here is a look at uh, a display that they had of the firefighting equipment that they might use for damage control and whatever the case may be. Uh, you know, during, uh, during a battle or during, uh, you know, something that just might happen uh, aboard ship. Now, this ship, uh, with, out of wartime, uh, could, uh, could uh, be crewed by 1,500 people. During wartime, during the time when they were on a cruise, there were 2,500 people aboard the USS Alabama. This is one of the many machine shops. This is a self-contained city. These ships have to be able to rely on themselves for everything and anything they need, any kind of repair, any kind of parts, if they had to fabricate parts. If you remember the big yellow beam that was uh, in the other picture back in the uh, sick bay, and we saw that, and uh, that actually runs through just about the entire length of the ship to these machine shops. And what they would use those beams for is they'd have special caddies that would hook onto the beams, and you could load a 500-pound piece of gear or a 1,000-pound piece of gear and get it to the machine shop, and they would either rebuild it or build the part needed to fix it in here. When you think about this kind of thing, it's absolutely extraordinary. And now we get to the galley. All that's made me a little hungry. So here we are at the galley, and, of course, they serve these 2,500 people three meals a day. Absolutely incredible to think about all the work that uh, that went into that. And, of course, uh, they form a chow line, as they called it, and they would go down. You can see uh, on the other side here, there's another uh, section to that on the other side of this particular deck. And then this picture is showing some of the places that they would sit and eat. And I wish I had gotten a square on look at this picture with some of the some of the crew. That would have been really cool. Let me reset. This is KE zero VH. All right, and uh, here in this picture, those of you watching on YouTube, once again, you see the bars over the entry in the hatchway. Uh, Larry actually uh, took me down into here because we saw the receiver room, uh, the radio receiver room. Well, now he's going to take us down to the transmitter room, which is buried even further in the middle and down deep in the ship. I never saw the bottom of this ship, guys. It goes on forever. But we unlocked this door, went down that passageway, which that passageway, you see it there? It ain't that big. <laughs> I'm, I'm only 5'8", and uh, I was feeling a little claustrophobic at this point. 
But then it opens up into the big transmitter room, and, uh, you know, the ship used a, a couple of 500-watt transmitters, and that's it. Uh, those are these transmitters over here uh, to the right. Those are actually just 500 watts, and that's all that they would use. And this is a close-up of uh, one of these 500-watt transmitters uh, that they had aboard the, uh, the Alabama there. And, um, again, all of this uh, is such amazing technology for the day. But today, when we look at, uh, you know, our little uh, FT, FT-991As and our Kenwood HF rigs and all that and everything that uh, we do today, it's pretty amazing. And think of the power of these things, Drew. They actually had generators in this room as well that were driven by the ship's engines. So, uh, man, again, the noise, can you imagine? Uh, you know, if you ever want to look up the type, uh, let's see, the uh, CAY-52267 radio transmitter. Uh, frequency range 300 to 18.1 kilocycles. How about that? <laughs> From the Navy Department Bureau of Ships there. So, uh, man, oh, man, I, I still am blown away. I look at this, and I can smell the inside of this room again, uh, and uh, and so on and so forth. Just really amazing stuff. This is KE0VH with the Sky Uplink Monday Night System Wide Net, also streaming on YouTube, and I'm giving you guys a tour of the USS Alabama via video. I hope you can uh, get to see that. And we will go through the check-in list here in just a little bit. Uh, here is uh, a look at some of the dummy charges uh, for practice charges. They use these for uh, the 16-inch guns. They would lower these, uh, you know, down uh, out of the uh, magazines where they were stored, and they put them up through the barbettes to the turret, lift them up with the shells. And uh, these are, <laughs> you know, they don't have any live ordnance on the uh, the ship at this time, but. Uh, I, I was just really, again, taken aback by, oh, my gosh, look at it. And these things are heavy, too. I think they're 50 pounds or more of, uh, you know, gunpowder to fire these 16-inch guns. Uh, I had to take a picture of the chapel. Uh, the chapel served uh, all faiths and uh, anybody uh, who wanted to attend services. Uh, pretty non-denominational there, uh, with the exception of doing different services for, uh, for different men. So there's the altar and uh, and then here's uh, here's the uh, the congregational sitting place. Uh, uh, I can't think of what to call it on board ship, but this was the uh, the chapel, and you can see the curved outer part of the hull here in this picture too, which I thought was really really extraordinary. All right, now we're on the outside with the 16 inch guns. They're all capped, of course, but just the sheer size of these things and imagining what they must have sounded like. And of course, if you've ever seen uh, this sort of thing on TV, it's uh, pretty amazing uh, to see the blast. There's uh, KE 0 VH at one of the uh, 20 millimeter uh, anti aircraft gun emplacements. Uh, would not want to be having to stand to man this gun when that 16 incher is going off. Holy smokes. KE 0 VH, stand by. This gives you an idea of the scale of these things. Uh, you know, I'm just a little pipsqueak underneath uh, these uh, three three sixteen inch guns. Just uh, absolutely incredible. There's a, a view looking down uh, from the bridge towards the bow of the ship and uh, seeing the guns and, uh, of course, just the immense size of this thing. The Battle Bridge is truly interesting. We're going to wrap up with this more or less. Uh, the Battle Bridge was a 16-inch armored uh, citadel, essentially. Uh, there wasn't much room in it. Uh, as you see, the layout of the plan of the entire bridge here, uh, the Battle Bridge is very small. This uh, was uh, the general sailing bridge in front of it. But uh, this thing had 16-inch thick diameter curved walls, and it was very claustrophobic. Probably only about five or six feet across, so you'd get uh, the people who were in there. There's a, a picture here of a quartermaster from uh, uh, 1943, circa 1943, at the ship's wheel. Uh, and, um, again, uh, just the immensity of all, all this stuff. Uh, this is a picture of the captain's quarters, and you can see Larry uh, in the reflection there on the phone <laughs> while I'm uh, taking a picture. This is the chart room. This is all right off the bridge, of course. Uh, so all the directions uh, could be given to uh, to the crew on watch. And this is one of the 16-inch blast doors for the citadel of the uh, battle bridge. And uh, you think when these things are locked, and you can see the top part up here, this is a very tiny viewport. 
very tiny viewport, maybe about eight or nine inches long, about two inches uh, tall, and uh, going through the thickness of the wall um, of this doorway to get into the battle bridge. So uh, let me uh, reset, and we'll finish up here real quick. Then we'll get back to check-ins and see what your thoughts are. This is Zero vh All right, and we'll uh, wrap up uh, with this picture here of the B-52 bomber. And, uh, again, uh, just an extraordinary aircraft if you're a uh, – uh, an air, air uh, aircraft uh, fan like I am getting to see one of these things live and close up and in person. They have an SR-71 there. Uh, I didn't uh, get a chance to actually get over to the submarine uh, b between the amateur radio operations and getting to see everything else. I just did not get a chance to do that. Uh, but, man, again, thanks to Larry K5LDA and the guys at the Deep South Amateur Radio Club. And uh, it was a tremendous trip. So let's go ahead and get to uh, check-ins here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and go down through the rest of the list that we have on NetLogger, and then we'll take another round of check-ins uh, from you. So uh, let's talk to uh, Richard, VE5RH in Saskatoon. Richard, good evening. Welcome to the Net. What are your thoughts on the uh, material covered tonight? This is K0VH. Okay, guys, once again, I got kind of a list here, so I'm going to go ahead and go through them. Uh, I'm going to call on you. If you're not there, we're going to move on. Uh, Richard, November 6, Delta Tango. Richard in Lodi, California. Richard, good evening. Welcome to the net. All right, then. We'll go to Dave in uh, Center, Colorado, in 0 KM. I bet you're there. Dave, how are you? Yeah, good evening, uh, Jack. And to the net in 0 KM. Uh, interesting uh, program there. Um, yeah, and also on the blanket repeater, I uh, texted uh, him that works in uh, Alamosa and uh, lives in Blanca, so just need to come up with a uh, DMR rating for him, I guess. So anyway, uh, I, got, I was a kid, uh, we toured the uh, Queen Mary, but they hadn't gotten the radio equipment set up yet. A few years ago in, uh, uh, well, let's see, uh, San Francisco, there's an S.S. Jeremiah O'Brien. That was an interesting tour. It was a Liberty ship. So. Very good. Well, back to net there. Uh, KE0VH, N0KM in the group. Yeah, okay, Dave. Very good, very good. Yeah, Liberty ships would be a really interesting visit as well. And I know that there's some museum ships uh, that are Liberty ships as well. So, uh there you go. Oh, okay. Now Paul told me, and Paul, you're right. If you're still listening, uh, the uh, the water the the water uh, the water fountain's called a scuttlebutt. That's right, scuttlebutt. That's what uh, <laughs> uh, that's uh, uh, what uh, uh, Larry told me. So, yep, scuttlebutt. Thanks, Paul. I just looked at the uh, YouTube chat there and uh, and saw that. So, uh, thank you. All right, Chris in Tampa, Florida, Alpha Delta Four Zulu uniform. I know there's a bit of a delay too uh, between the uh, radio and the YouTube, but uh, yeah. Nothing we can do about that. Uh, Chris in Tampa, Florida, 84ZU. Good evening. Welcome to the Sky of Link Monday Night System Wide Net. This is K0VH. Okay, uh, we'll roll on. Sebastian in Fort Wayne, Indiana, my buddy uh, from EMF, KB0TTL. Sebastian, good evening. Welcome to the net. What are your thoughts? Quite an interesting little uh, ship viewer that you put on there. Uh, I once had the chance to, uh, to view the USS North Carolina uh, Museum. Of course, I 
<laughs> a long time ago, and I did not have at least the uh, general class license that I would have needed to operate a mortgage back then. But <laughs> um, it was quite something uh, just touring uh, that battleship, just getting an opportunity to go out there and uh, do that. But, um, uh, just uh, just hanging out here. Um, <laughs> having a sort of an eventful week, getting one of the new acquisitions, um, hopefully ready to put on the air. The closing hasn't gone through on it yet, but uh, just doing the satellite feed, uh, satellite dish tomorrow, and uh, on out that away. So um, just living the life. Hey, good to hear from you there, kb 0 ctl Yeah, okay, Sebastian Gray, great to hear you tonight. Thanks for being here. Yep, yep, uh, got a lot of work to do, don't we? <laughs> got to uh, got to keep up with it. Cat uh, tells me that people are doubling many that I do not hear. Well, I've got to get back to uh, taking some more check-ins, and we'll do that after we go through the uh, uh, aim list here. Uh, Robert in Kellyville Ridge, New South Wales, Australia. Robert, uh, VK2DY, how are you uh, this after? Is it afternoon there for you now, Robert? Uh, go ahead from K0VH. Okay, Robert must have to roll on. Gary, NC2WX, you are next. Uh, Gary, good evening. What would you think about the tour there from K0VH? Go ahead, Gary. Okay, well, I guess Gary had to drop out there, too. Let's go to Stan in Bogota, Chi to um, Mississippi. Stan, are you still there? Uh, I saw in the YouTube chat that you had to jump out, but uh, are you still there by radio? Stan, go ahead. Well, okay then. Uh, yeah, Gary is saying doubles, doubles. Well, you know, once again, guys, you got to come back to me in real time on the radio. Um, I see VK2DY is still talking. I am not hearing him at all. Let me uh, see if I can figure out what's going on. But anyway, uh, maybe we do it for Remembrance Day. I don't know, or uh, some other day. But I'll I'll uh, I'll talk to people and see what we can do. Uh, thank you very much for taking my check-in. VK2DY, back to now. Okay, well, we do not have something translating properly here. Uh, Robert, I heard you on the analog, but not on the digital side for some reason. I'm not sure uh, exactly what's going on there. We may have a, a technical uh, uh, fly in the ointment here tonight. Uh, let me go back and see if we can pick up Gary, NC2WX. Uh, Gary, uh, are you there and can you hear me? We'll, uh, we'll see what we can do here. Uh, yes, Jack, I hear you both on DMR and on analog. I'm coming in DMR here. Uh, so, uh, mighty fine tour. My goodness, it takes me back, Jack. Got to get down there and see some of those ships. When I was in there's worth it. I should have stayed in. I toured the, I toured the JFK uh, with a friend who was stationed on it. Also toured the Enterprise, and then uh, one ship, one submarine. They wanted me to volunteer for sub duty, so I toured a sub. And to myself, no, nope, no, thank you. So anyway, again, thanks, uh, Jack. I can see you had a great time there. Uh, NCTWX, back to now.
Uh, great to hear you tonight, Gary. Yeah, I think um, I think maybe we might have had uh, some loss in the uh, in the connection across there, but uh, seems to be uh, seems to be working now. Uh, let me go to Burnus. Burnus, good evening. Burnus, of course, is our net control for the Skyhub Link Monday night or Tuesday night uh, Colorado Astronomy Net. And uh, Burnus, great to get to hear from you as always. I uh, hope everything went well last week. So, Burnus, what you got? What do you think about the tour tonight? Uh, uh, let's see, uh, KI0AR from KE0VH. Okay, one more time. I'll try a Burnus K I zero A R from K E zero V H. Okay, Burnus must have had to jump out there, and I'm listening on both analog and digital there. Let's see. Let's go to Brian, uh, our good buddy Brian, K6SKI, down in Fairplay. Brian, good evening. Uh, Welcome to the net. What are your comments? In there, Jack, and everybody else tonight. Yeah, I enjoyed your uh, presentation there. That was a great time. I know I, I would have enjoyed doing that. Um, I've actually never taken any of the tours, but I was able to uh, do a family day out on the USS Nimitz years ago where we went out to sea for a whole day, and I ended up hanging out on the flight deck where the uh, controllers are. I forget their exact names, the lights that tell the pilots if they can land or not, and the catapult operator, so that was really neat watching all the planes taking off and flying. We saw a bunch of jets flying uh, level with the flight deck, probably like a mile out, and they boomed us with uh, supersonic speeds, and it actually shook the ship. It was pretty neat. But this was great, Jack. I appreciate it. I enjoyed it very much, and I'm going to throw it back to you. Some other people can have their perspective. Have a great evening. This is K6SKI. Hey, Brian, thank you so much. So much uh, good to hear you tonight, and uh, glad you enjoyed that. And, uh, you know, we'll have some other things down the line. I want to apologize for those of you who maybe tried to get in and couldn't or double. We will take another round of check-ins here. If you look on the uh, YouTube screen, you'll see where we are in NetLogger. Next is Joe in Colorado Springs. Skate Zero TPW. Joe, welcome to the net. Good evening. Hello, Jack. I hope you're doing well. Presentation, lots of good pictures and stuff. Great, great net. I never got to do any radio from any of that stuff, but last time I was out at Pearl Harbor, I did go on the USS Missouri. We got to tour that, and then about three years later, I was down in Norfolk for high school reunion, 50th anniversary high school reunion, and we went out on the Wisconsin. So I got to go on a couple of them battleships. They were it's really nice, but. Uh, Great presentation. Great presentation, Jay. Thank you very much for doing it. So, so you got a lot of people with that. I'll turn it back over to you. KE0, TPW. Okay, Joe. Very good. Great to hear you, my friend. As always, really appreciate you being there. And uh, next is Paul in Wellington, New Zealand, ZL2 Bravo Echo Zulu. Paul, uh, good uh, Tuesday morning to you, or is it Tuesday afternoon yet there? Not sure. But, uh, Paul, welcome to the uh, Sky of Link Monday night system-wide net from KE0VH. Yeah, K0VH, Zulu Lima 2, Bravo Echo Zulu. Yes, uh, good evening, Jack, and good evening to the people on the net. Yes, uh, some of those uh, things you showed me brought back a few memories. When I first joined the Royal New Zealand Air Force in 1972, the, uh, they still had some CH-47s as uh, transport aircraft, and uh, when we needed to fly on the shuttle from base to Air Force Base to Air Force Base, we used to fly on... Uh, as passengers on CH-47s, 
they had a distinctive habit of sort of rattling like crazy before they took off. So <laughs> that's one of those things. So I spent a little bit of time on uh, the Royal New Zealand Navy Leander class frigates for a couple of weeks uh, in the Electronic Warfare Office doing some work and uh, also living in the uh, working in the sleeping quarters, eating at the mess. So uh, so I, I do know a little bit about the shipboard experiences. Anyway, back to you, Jack. Um, uh, uh, and also, also the other thing too. Um, I also owned some of those. Uh, once upon a time, when I was uh, fairly young, owned a uh, T Tango Charlie Sierra uh, radios. They were a uh, radio that was a uh, two large black boxes, had similar labels to the uh, front of the uh, ones you had on there, and um, that was a, uh, a, I think, a radio using PT votes and, and vehicles of the of the of the time. It was made by uh, Air King Products, which was a uh, a long, uh, a long, a name long forgotten. Anyway, back to you, Jack. K zero V H said L two B U Z over. Yeah, okay, Paul. Very good. Well, I'm glad it struck up those memories for you. That's really cool. Uh, you know, I hope, uh, I hope uh, everybody kind of enjoyed that. Uh, you know, who had maybe had an opportunity to be on one of those ships before, because it might strike up some memories like that for sure. Uh, let me go back to KI zero AR Burnus. Uh, I got a note from Cat uh, via text that uh, you wanted to come back and try to have some input there. Let's try to get you on, and then we'll uh, go on down uh, the rest of the list there. Uh, Burnus KI zero AR. Let me come back to you. This is KE0VH. Go ahead, sir. Uh, this is ki 0 Me Over. Yeah, Bernice, let me go ahead and uh, pick you up here. For some reason, um, we're getting some uh, translation issues uh, from analog back to digital. I may have to reboot the hub, but we'll uh, we'll do that after the net and hope for the best here. Go ahead, Bernice. All right. Good evening, Jack and the net. Uh, this is KI0AR. Um, yeah, I brought back old man. Uh, I, uh, the longest on a Navy ship was the USS Iowa in 1984, uh, about four hours. I was uh, still on, on uh, uh, duty then and uh, got to uh, dig around in a lot. Yeah, everybody on digital standby, we're having an issue here at KE0VH. Been uh, had fun <laughs> uh, doing that. I've made a couple of contacts. Uh, with the USS Pampanito submarine out in uh, in, uh, Sa uh, in uh, San Francisco and the USS Midway out in uh, uh, San Diego. The uh, Pampanito was actually used in the movie uh, uh, Down Periscope with Kelsey Grammer. So I thought that was kind of neat when I made that contact. That's all I have, uh, Jack. This is KI-0AR. Back to net. Yeah, okay, Bernice, I uh, switched over to the analog repeater there. Let me see if this is translating. It looks like it is. Um, I, I'm sorry everybody didn't get to it. Yeah, it's working there. Uh, sorry that uh, everybody didn't get to hear your uh, comments there about working the Pampanito and seeing all those. So, uh, anyway, thanks, buddy. Appreciate it. We'll look forward to your net tomorrow evening. Um, I do think we have a bit of a bug uh, in uh, the system uh, for some reason. Uh, let's see here. Um, all right. That's, uh, that's coming up there. Trying to juggle a lot here, guys. This is the uh, Skyhub Link Monday night system wide net. Uh, this is K0VH making it through uh, a couple of the, uh, the technical difficulties here, but, uh, we will, uh, we will get it figured out, uh, before, uh, before we uh, run on there. Let me do that and this, and we'll put that over there. And, uh, next on the list, let me pull that back up to where I can see it is uh, KF0EYS, my buddy Paul. Paul, good evening. Welcome uh, to the net. Uh, any comments for the net?
Okay, Paul must have had to roll along. Let's talk to Whiskey 9, Japan, America, Lima, John, and Bailey. John, good evening. Welcome to the net. Okay, I'm just checking back on the analog side, too, to make sure we didn't lose somebody. All right, let's talk to Ken in Castle Rock. K0UZ, Ken's one of our alternate uh, Monday night net uh, controls, and Ken appreciated you uh, covering for me the last couple of weeks. Uh, Ken, what you got? K0UZ from K0VH. Hey, Jack, K0UZ. Well, thank you for that, and a uh, fantastic present. I love the pictures, particularly the parts that uh, we underlings never get to see. And uh, thankful, in some ways, <laughs> that when it was operational, we didn't get to see it either. Uh, in any case, yeah, great presentation. Love the airplanes, too. Got to get that in there. And uh, But particularly, it was impressed by the uh, isolation ward um, in, a, in a previous... Skirmish. I had the opportunity of spending some time in one of those. It isn't quite that bad, but I can't imagine, um, you know, <laughs> three or four days or a week just laying in bed looking at that small little four-inch hole. Holy mackerel. That's horrible. All right, back to you, Jack, and thanks again. Great presentation. K0VZ, back to control. k 0 uz Yeah, okay, Ken, thank you so much. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, they, they kept board games and cards, and they had uh, card tables set up over in the corner. I didn't really get a picture of that. They they told me I couldn't really see it. <laughs> it, it was uh, tough to see in there. All right, Kilo Charlie 3, Papa Oscar Delta, Anthony in Pottsville, Pennsylvania. Welcome to the net. Anthony, are you there? Go ahead. This is KC3PO. So, PA. Hey, Jack. Um, caught the end of the presentation and really loved your enthusiasm. Um, it's something that uh, really caught my attention. Um, not at all familiar with it. I'm an old infantry guy, and uh, if we weren't in the dirt, we weren't doing anything. Um, never had an opportunity to, to, to be on or ride on anything like that, um, but certainly can. Uh, can, can enjoy the firepower. We once in Hawaii had an off, excuse me, offshore bombardment um, come in on a wildfire exercise, and uh, it was really impactful for us guys that were on the opposite end of it. Um, but uh, certainly enjoyed. Good job, and I appreciate you uh, having the net tonight. KC3, POD, Tony and Pottsville. Back to the net. Tony, thank you for your service. Thank you for all you did. And, uh, man, being down in the dirt like that, that's so scary. <laughs> uh, it was scary enough uh, thinking about what these guys went through on these ships, but uh, uh, for that kind of service, man, above and beyond. Tony, thank you. Steven in Westminster, KF0LRH, you are next on our list. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, get your uh, thoughts on uh, tonight's net. KF0LRH from KE0VH. Okay, he must have uh, jumped out there. Let's go ahead and get Eric in Colorado Springs, KE0SMR. Eric, your thoughts for the net tonight from KE0VH. Jack in the net. Um, missing videos for you there. I've never been on a ship, but I think like one of the earlier stations, I did tour the uh, Queen Mary when I was a young young man, and that was pretty cool. But uh, thanks for this, Ned. It was interesting to see the pictures, and I'm glad you had a good time out there. Uh, KE zero SMR back to net control. Okay, Eric. Uh, for some reason, we lost you there on the uh, digital. It's not your not your fault. Uh, there's something going on with the system. But uh, thanks for being here tonight. Appreciate it. Uh, finally, last on the list at the moment. Then we'll go ahead and take uh, another round of uh, radio check-ins. K0QJP, 
John and Thornton, K0QJP, it's your turn. John, uh, any thoughts for the net from K0VH? Yeah, Jack, K0QJP. I toured to Alabama also about 45 years ago. From your photos, it looks like they've really spruced it up a bit. Everything was looking nice. They were still working on it 45 years ago. I enjoy the museum ships. I also toured the Intrepid in New York City, Lexington in Texas, Yorktown in South Carolina, North Carolina, Missouri. Uh, I was in the Navy, and I, I was going to answer your scuttlebutt question, but somebody beat me to it. I, I worked on large aircraft in the Navy, and I was always playing with the radios, particularly the HF, but we had two medium frequency, two HF, two HF, and two HF, so... I used to hang out at night on the tarmac listening to the HF. So that's my take on that. But I you know, enjoyed your pictures. That was nice to see how they got it fixed up. Zero QJP back to Jim. All right. Thank you. That's awesome. That's awesome. Thank you very much uh, for your comments there. And, uh, man, yeah, I imagine they've spruced it up some, but there were some areas that still looked pretty rough. All right, John, thanks for being here tonight. All right, let's go ahead and take another round of digital only at this time, digital only check-ins. And once again, if you're in the Denver metro area, 449-450 will drop off at about 826 or so uh, for the Rocky Mountain Radio League uh, uh, home net, club net uh, tonight, but you can still get in on uh, 449.050 there on the Amico building, and uh, we'll have another repeater ready here soon, too, covering the metro area. But uh, let's go ahead and get another round of check-ins. If you're digital and digital only at this time, uh, let's get you checked in from K0VH, your call sign, and only your call sign phonetically twice. Yeah, K6OWF, Bob in Boise. No traffic for the net. Good evening, Net. My name is Kevin. Whiskey Foxtrot, one tango Zulu. Whiskey Foxtrot, one tango Zulu. Sean in Florence, Oregon. No traffic. Kilo Golf 8, Romeo November Yankee. Kilo Golf 8, Romeo November Yankee. Okay, uh, I'll tell you who I heard that time. Uh, guys, this is not a traffic net, so saying no traffic mm, really doesn't get us anywhere. Uh, just so you know, if you don't want to uh, speak, you can say in and out if you'd like to just check in. Otherwise, we'd like to hear your comments. So I heard Kilo 6, Oscar, Whiskey, Foxtrot. I heard Kilo, Foxtrot, Zero, Lima, Yankee, Oscar. I heard WF1, Tango Zulu, and Kilo Golf 8, Romeo, Victor, Yankee. And I say I see that uh, Cat heard uh, K F zero L Y Q. I heard L Y O, but um, maybe maybe this will uh, correct that when we get there. Uh, all right, let's go ahead and take some analog check-ins, and then we'll go back to the top of this list. Analog only at this time. Analog only to check in at this time. Please call now. This is K zero V H. King Charles 8, Fox Queen Victor, C8FQV. Hello, Charlie 4, Zulu, Yankee, Charlie. Kilo, Charlie 4, Zulu, Yankee, Charlie. You can get me on the digital round, Kilo Echo 2, Alpha Yankee Delta, Kilo Echo 2, Alpha Alpha Yankee Delta, Rick in Buffalo, New York.
Okay, well, go ahead and pull up there. We're, we're having some troubles uh, for some reason, analog getting to digital all the way through. Um, uh, I think, uh, Bernus, if you're still listening tomorrow night, we may reboot the hub uh, before the net starts. Uh, we'll give that a shot. All right, let's go ahead and go uh, back to the top of the list here and talk to Kilo Foxtrot Zero, either Lima Yankee Oscar or Lima Yankee Quebec. Can you correct me on that? Uh, go ahead. This is K0VH. Hello, Nick. It is actually Kilo Foxtrot <clears throat> Zero Lima Yankee Quebec. Um, and uh, I think what happened there is DMR and YSF are also not um, mixing. Uh, I think somebody was talking at the same time as, as me on DMR. Um, I'm coming in YSF reflector. Anyway, really enjoyed the presentation. Um, I especially enjoyed actually making contact with you. That was a surprise. I got pretty excited to hear you uh, basically calling to see you from the Alabama. That was pretty fun. So. Just appreciate you. Um, really like your net, and uh, looks like you had a ball. That's all I got. Back to you. Okay, there we go. Hey, Kevin, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun, and uh, uh, glad you got to uh, hear us there. Uh, let me let me go ahead and see if a K6OWF has any comments for the net. Robert in Boise, Idaho. Uh, Robert, you said no traffic, but we're not doing traffic. Uh, do you have any comments for the net uh, from KE0VH? Uh, if you do, welcome. If not, we'll uh, go on to the next one there. Forgive your poor your poor grasshoppers. Ignorance. I did not know there's a difference. I difference. I am educated and I'm also new, so thank you for the for the straight and narrow there. Hey, thanks. Um yeah, I uh, I love C four FM. I'm just uh, new to it. Been looking on uh, at adding a few things up here in Boise, I know we've got a small group of folks, but gotta be growing and uh and now if if uh, the dear Lord were just let us have spring instead of this constant on and off snow and water, snow and rain. But you guys have a good time tonight. Again, thanks for the invite. Thank you, Ned. K6OWF, clear. Robert, we are so glad to have you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, yeah, you know, <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, we 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 don't really do traffic. Traffic is message passing. All the, you know, we're always glad to help educate and uh, you know help uh, guys grow and get new in the hobby, or maybe old guys learn new stuff. I know that I've had to learn so much new stuff lately that it's not even funny. I can hardly keep up with everything. It is just absolutely nuts and how much uh, this hobby has changed over the years and uh, what it encompasses these days. But, Robert, thanks for being here. Sure, appreciate that. All right, let's go next on the uh, net logger list here to Whiskey Fox 1, Tango Zulu, Sean in Florence, Oregon. Sean, welcome to the net. Any comments for the net this evening? It's, yeah, this is Sean in Florence, Oregon. Uh, sorry about that. I kind of keyed up too quick there. Um, yeah, no, no uh, I guess the only comment I have is scuttlebutt. I was familiar with that word, not being in the Navy or anything like that, just uh, sort of like a trivia. I don't know where I heard it, but that was driving me crazy as soon as you said that. So scuttlebutt is my comment, and thank you for uh, getting me straight with the traffic in between that and you know, just having a better understanding of, of that as opposed to comment and just the no traffic net. Appreciate it, and uh, that was a pretty cool video, or, you know, your presentation there is was, was, yeah, pretty neat, and uh, nothing else going on here, and uh, this is Whiskey Fox, Heart One Tango Zoo, back to Net Control. Sean, thank you for being here. Thank you for being here. We appreciate your participation, and uh, welcome to the uh, Skyhub Link community. Once again, I'd like to remind everybody, check out the website, skyhublink.com, for all the information on the repeaters. We're an open and welcoming community. We're an amateur radio uh, community fellow uh, group of people 
uh, who uh, who really enjoy not only the hobby but getting to know new people and helping others out. So uh, welcome, welcome, uh, Chris and Frederick, Maryland. If you're there, Kilo Echo Four Quebec November Oscar. It's your turn. Uh, what are your comments for the net this evening, Chris from K E Zero V H? Okay, going once, twice, three times. Chris, are you there? KE4, QNO in Frederick, Maryland. All right, let's go down the line to Jonathan, KG8RNY, Kilo Golf 8, Romeo November Yankee in Remus, Michigan. Hey, welcome, uh, Jonathan. I don't know that I've talked to anybody in Remus, Michigan. Go ahead. Oh, good evening to you. I'm actually uh, brand new to this net. Uh, I've been listening for a while, and it's uh, the first time I've actually been able to check in. So I enjoyed the presentation. It was a lot of fun. Uh, I'm probably the, uh, one of the youngest ones on this uh, net right now, but I can say uh, when I was a little bit younger, I actually had the opportunity to stay overnight on the U.S. of Silver Sides, which is a uh, museum ship, or a submarine, excuse me, in uh, Macasta, or not Macasta, um, Muskegon, Michigan. Um, it was fun to see the pictures. I enjoyed it, and uh, kind of makes me want to go back and see if I can uh, see the radio equipment there. But thanks for doing the net tonight, and uh, thanks for having me. KG8, RMY. All right, Jonathan, thanks for being here tonight. Appreciate that. And, yeah, uh, if it uh, challenges you to do uh, something again or uh, to pick up something new, that'd be awesome, wouldn't it? Uh, Jonathan, thank you. Mark in Aurora, Ohio. Mark, KC8FQV from KU0VH. What are your thoughts for the net tonight? Go ahead. Okay, one more time for uh, Mark, KC8FQV. Mark, uh, go ahead from KE0VH. Uh, by the way, those, those of you on YouTube, that's me beeping my radio, so you're hearing that. Okay, Mark is not there. Let's talk to Howard, Kilo Charlie Fours, Ed Yankee Charlie down in Florida. Howard, good evening. What are your thoughts and comments for the net tonight from KE0VH? Well, Jack, I don't know if you're working or not. I know you got some technical difficulties. KE0VH, KC4 is at YC. Yeah, Howard, uh, we're having some troubles. Uh, the uh, digital and analog mode are uh, not liking each other tonight for some reason, but uh, I'll hear you in there and I'll pump you through uh, the analog side. Go ahead. Yeah, okay, Jack. We're all watching you on the YouTube. Know there's a little bit of delay, so I've got the audio down. And, uh, yeah, I understand you got uh, some gremlins in the system. No problem at all. Thank you so much for that presentation on the USS Alabama. Wow. Wow. That is really impressive. And I'm glad uh, that you enjoyed your trip uh, out there. I'm not sure exactly where the Alabama is located, but, uh, boy, those pictures are something else. I'm glad I tuned into this stream uh, tonight and got a chance to uh, get a, uh, a pictorial tour of the ship. And also the ham station on there. Well, that's really impressive. It really is. And um, I like your setup there. It looks like you got new glasses. And um, I like the K Love mug, too. <laughs> and uh, yeah, um, glad you had a good time there. And I'll go ahead and send it back to you. And um, uh, next Monday, uh, we'll have a better. Uh, 
We won't have as many technical uh, gremlins getting in the system there. Uh, K0VH, uh, hopefully I'm coming through okay, Jack. KC4 is at YC, Orlando. Okay, now I'm on both. Uh, yeah, Howard, thank you. I appreciate that. Yep, new glasses, <laughs> and uh, had a uh, had a really good time. Yeah, that's working. Digital to analog is working just fine, but analog to digital for some reason is uh, is not happy um, half the time here. Uh, so uh, we'll go ahead and uh, roll down the uh, list here. I'm probably going to wrap up the net after these last two here, guys. Patrick in Buffalo, New York, Kilo Echo 2, Alpha Yankee Delta, it's your turn. Go ahead, Patrick. Uh, welcome to the net. Any comments? All right, then, uh, let's, uh, let's see if uh, uh, W0ZZS down in Pueblo, uh, we're going to let you have the uh, last word tonight, Fred. Fred, go ahead, W0ZZS from K0VH. Welcome to the net. And the net, uh, nice net tonight, uh, W0ZZS. In Pueblo, well, I didn't get to see your see the battleship, I was out in the car um, cleaning and vacuuming and listening to the to the radio and then uh, and then I was listening to the, uh, the two meter radio and then uh, pretty soon the uh, Columbine net came on and I had an ATF radio in my car so I fired up the Columbine net on 39.89 kilo cycles and I uh, checked into the Columbine net uh, for the first time in uh, two years since I moved to Pueblo here. It was a nice night out, and I still had a little bit of daylight, so I, uh, it, was, it was nice to hear the guys on the Columbine also. And um, But I didn't get to see the battleship, so I came back in the house here, and uh, that's where I'm at now is on the, uh, on the, I logged in through the computer, and uh, and thank you for doing doing all this stuff that you do, Jack. It's uh, really appreciated. Uh, you don't know how much, it, how much it's appreciated because I can't put up any outside antennas, so... <laughs> So it's, uh, it's really super. Anyway, uh, uh, that's about all I had for say good, good evening to you, 7 3 to you, and uh, everybody on the net here, and uh, a wonderful net. K0, VZ, W0ZZ, that's over. Yeah, okay, Fred, very good, very good. Yeah, we're losing the analog to digital translation for some reason. I am not sure why, so uh, not sure uh, not sure what to do about it. We'll report it. All right, uh, 34 check-ins tonight. Thanks, guys. Um, that's going to wrap. We're going to go ahead and uh, wrap it up tonight. Uh, once again, we'll have the YouTube uh, presentation up online for you to watch in its entirety if you're interested. It will uh, uh, be up uh, later tonight or first thing uh, in the morning. So uh, anyway, want to thank everybody for participating. Great to have you here. This has been the Monday Night Skyhub Link System Wide Net. Thanks to Cat W Zero KPH, of course, for all our spotting and logging. A lot of uh, work involved with that. Thanks again to Skylar, our chief engineer. W Zero SKY Jeremy W Zero JRL, the system engineer, for all the work on the Skyhub Link main hub system. Uh, thanks to Bill Bucky Buckwalter, W0SUN, who does a lot of our wires X engineering. Thanks to the Rocky Mountain Radio League, the Denver Water Amateur Radio Club, the Denver Radio League, the N2K and K West Co repeater system, Mark in zero XRX, Randall AE seven RJ, Richard VE five RH, and all the other systems and operators on Sky Hub Link. If you'd like to be on our email list, be sure to go to skyhublink.com, click on the join connect tab for instructions. Go to my webpage. K0VH.com. Scroll down the page for information on the net, the Sky Up link in my newsletter, the K0VH Ham Shack, which I will be doing a special edition for all the Alabama pictures, too. So with that, we'll wrap up tonight's net, return all systems to normal amateur use. Want to thank everybody for being here tonight, and we'll look for you next week. Uh, have a great night. Uh, peace and long life, everybody. This is KE0VH. Good night.